Thief! A scream rang out, piercing through the wide noise and chatter of the busy street of the station. Stop her! The sound of quickly running hooves pounding on the station's metal floor, punctuated by a gush shouts and yells from passerby, as they were involuntarily involved in the ongoing incident, either by being pushed out of the way, or used as brief stepping stones for the nimble creature tearing through the crowd at high speed. Hot on her trail were two other sets of first steps, one very regular, rhythmically hitting the floor every second while taking long strides, the other characterised but further spread out, hard bumps on the floor as their owner quickly hopped along. Reprik had trouble keeping his eyes on the back of the running thief in the crowd of much larger people around him, and not only her. Even though the freak was usually sticking out like a sore thumb amongst normal people, he had lost sight of even him in the sheer chaos around them, but he also couldn't concentrate on that right now. Both of them had bolted without much thought once they had heard the first cry for help and spotted the culprit. However, she was a fast beast, and it wasn't easy catching up to her. A Kez theory if Reprik had seen correctly, and judging by her height, and barely developed antlers, it was a young woman. Not that that mattered too much among those ne'er-do-wells. She tore through the crowd with reckless abandon, a small statue allowing her to slip through the people, most of which were caught unaware by what was happening through them. Of course, Reprik himself wasn't any larger than the young scoundrel, however he did have a few more qualms about getting too up close and personal with random strangers, causing him to more often than not take a slightly longer way through the crowd than the escaping criminal. If only so many of the civilians weren't staying around and gawking, it would make way for the delinquent to be apprehended easier instead. He would have caught up with her in no time. He kept his eyes trained on the long, snow-white stripe along the crook's back, interrupted by the straps of many bags and pouches she had fastened to her body, one of which most likely contained the stolen goods. It was easily her most standout feature and allowed him to quickly identify her in the crowd, even now. She also kept glancing back at him, surely worried that he would sooner or later close the gap. No doubt she recognised a uh, sipper slang, and knew that this chase would not go on for long should she not get a long way out of his reach soon. Stop right there, Reprie yelled out, while bounding around a group of shot bystanders she had just shoved and squeezed away through. You have no chance anyway, so spare us this charade. Very funny, Slowpoke, the thief yelled back, and sounding astonishingly confident, even though the distance between her and her pursuer had clearly shortened significantly since the chase had begun. Was it possible that she was planning something? Or was she merely trying to unsettle him? As if he was just a piece of furniture, the road jumped and ran across the back of a quadrupedally walking Koshishi, causing the man to shoot his long neck around to look at what had just trampled on him like that. This gave Reprig an opening to walk around him while his head was out of the way. However, to his surprise, she made a sharp turn immediately afterwards, catching him off guard and forcing him to waste precious moments slowing his momentum and skittering across the floor while adjusting his direction to hurry after her. Was this her great escape plan? If so, it was pretty laughable. Sure, it had given her a slight head start, but it wouldn't work again now that he was anticipating it. In fact, it may lose her ground should she try that one more time, as Reprieve was fairly sure he could take sharp turns more easily than her. Yet apparently, she seemed determined to make the little bit of room she had won for herself count. It was surprising that she could sprint even faster than before, but not at all a problem. Then she took another turn. This time he was ready for it and cut the corner, closing in on her. It was a full success, and he was now close enough to hear her mumble under her breath. He didn't understand what she was saying, however what he did manage to pick up on was her reaching into one of her many pouches. The movement was followed by a quick jerking of her arm, and shortly after, by a metal clank. What the? Reprie thought, but it was cut short by the thing the girl had dropped, fulfilling its purpose, suddenly ringing out with a loud bang and bursting open, near instantly covering a considerable area around Reprie and the girl in a hazy, white smoke, obscuring his vision. The chemical felt strange in his eyes and almost immediately stuffed his trunk uncomfortably, even though it had no scent of his own. Not only that, but the brief explosion, even minor as it was, was enough to stir up panic in the people around them. Combining that with them suddenly losing their vision, chaos broke out abruptly, with panic-stricken people inevitably stumbling into each other, trying to get to safety or find out what was happening to them. Many talked over each other and judging by the agitated voices, it appeared that some had even run into each other in the confusion only visible to him as some hazy outlines and waving silhouettes in the smoke. A fine mess the miscreant had caused there. And all that just so she could get away with her petty thievery. What a load of filth. Hopefully someone would reinstate order around here soon. And she better pray to whatever her people believed in that none of the bystanders got injured around here, or she would learn just how the law dealt with low lives who just didn't know when they were outmatched. 
His instincts told Reprieve that he was completely concealed on all sides by the smoke, making it hard to focus on the intensity of the situation. However, in his mind he knew that such a small device could certainly not cover a wide enough area to have much of an effect. Quickly, he pressed forward, avoiding the people still blindly stumbling through the smoke and trying to clumsily find their way, while he swiftly moved towards the direction she had disappeared in. Surely the border of the smoke-covered area could not be far. Once he was out, he would just have to catch up again. He'd show her to underestimate him. However, he would not get his chance to do that, as he wasn't the only one that had been underestimated. As he could already see the light around him getting brighter as the density of the smoke lessened towards his edges, he could hear the voice of the thief ring in a surprised yelp. Quickly, he sped up even further and within mere moments, he broke out of the cloud of smoke, pulling only Trousbit behind him into the open. Immediately, his eyes raced across his surroundings, trying to locate the fleeing criminal. But, as he quickly found out, she was fleeing no more. Only places away from him was the rabble, looking pretty bewildered while she was suspended in mid-air by a strong arm wrapped around her waist area, that had apparently snatched her off her feet as she tried to escape out of the cover of the smoke. The five long-heeled but still visibly scarred cuts along his forearm were probably on display now that he had taken the jacket of his uniform off. The thieves' winded expression told of a rather sudden stop she had been brought to by her capturer, and it seemed that she needed a moment to come to terms with the situation, she so unexpectedly found herself in. The multiple pointy flaps of her ears moved independently from each other, trying to gather as much information about her surroundings as possible, while her eyes were busy studying the strange, hairless being that had so effortlessly stopped her dead in her tracks. Gotcha! The human happily announced to the thief, as he looked back at her with a grin, his exposed fangs seemingly giving the girl halt for a moment. Reprieve looked at the freak astonishingly. When in the good graces had he even gotten in front of him? He had noticed the man disappearing at some point, but he had expected they had just shaken him by accident. Good work, Reprieve, the freak laughed, turning his attention away from the girl, whom he still held up like a sack of sand, and looked over towards Reprieve, while he was just using the moment of calmness to try and rid his trunk of the leftovers of the irritating smoke. He didn't exactly know what work he had done well. After all, James had acted completely out of his own planning, so he assumed that he also acted completely out of that of James. Uh, thanks. He answered distrustfully, and moved his head to the side to better look at the strange sight before him. The freak didn't acknowledge his answer, instead already looking back at his recent capture. Quite the reckless manoeuvre there, miss, he said in an unsettlingly cheerful tone that was an utter mismatch to the situation. People could have gotten hurt. Was that all he had to say? Being directly addressed apparently ripped the little filcher out of her shocking you stupor, and she quickly shook her head and brought her eyes back to the situation at hand. Smoke don't hurt anybody! She squealed out, and immediately started uselessly squirming in James's grasp, causing the man to look at her almost pitifully. However, it was clear that she would not get out of his hold like that any time soon. No, it doesn't, but panic does, Reprieve reprimanded, looking up at the struggling thief. Your hideous actions cause great distress to many good people, and don't try to tell me you don't know that yourself. For a moment, James flashed him an almost surprised look, before a more violent squirm for the lowlife demanded his attention. The girl now shot Reprieve a poisonous glare, before trying to push herself away from James, to no avail. May have considered it, she admitted under her breath, as she slowly but surely realised that she wouldn't be able to wriggle out of this quite so easily. It's not my fault if people lose their heads over a wee bit of smoke. What an annoying accent. If she was going to talk nonsense, couldn't she at least do so comprehensively? Well, that is only half true if you're the one throwing smoke grenades around in the first place. James replied with a dismissive smile on his face. Somehow, despite being the one that caught the thief, he didn't seem to be taking the situation all too seriously. However, the unsettling nature of his face and his dark, relentlessly staring eyes at least had the positive effect of making the criminal seriously consider before doing anything rash. Wouldn't have had to if you two soft hoops wouldn't have gone and chased me round all of a sudden. The thief responded defiantly, annoyingly flicking her ace and Chris ears in the process. She has some nerve, Reprieve said angrily, blurted out, looking at James, who still seemed to be more amused than stern. Well, you can't argue with her logic, James replied with a short bout of his low laughter, while also getting a better grip of the girl by briefly throwing and then re-grabbing her in place, causing her to let out a surprised yelp. You can't be serious, Reprieve grumbled at James, flicking his trunk up while he spoke to make his dissatisfaction known. She is a criminal, and you really want to let her shift the blame onto us? She is also right here and can be talked to directly. The thief had the gall to complain, while she was still being held like an unruly toddler by the freakish primate. Also, I can stand myself just fine. 
You don't have to be log me around like a sack of shite. James took a long look at the girl over his shoulder, and an even wider grin crept across his face. Oh, I like you. The seemingly most unqualified ambassador of the entire galaxy driveled. Then he so lowered her so that her hooves had solid ground under them once again, before adding, But don't you go running off on us again. Next time, you lose your standing privileges. Fine, fine, you got me, she said, dusting herself off and tidying up her messy fur while also taking a step away from the human. In that case, hand over your stolen goods already, before you get any good ideas, Reprieve said, stepping over to the filcher and stretching out an open hand, awaiting her compliance. If you cooperate from now on, there may be a possibility for a reduced sentence in it for you. The girl turned her head around and narrowed her eyes at him. I was talking to the muscle over here, she said dismissively, and lifted her nose, showing no signs of wanting to cooperate. I'd have gone away from your slowpokey little spit. Clearly, she was not quite comprehending the position she was in. James apparently couldn't quite help himself and visibly enjoyed watching the miscreant insult Reprieg. However, in the end, he shook his head and also extended his open palm. Come on now, hand him over, he casually ordered, and moved his fingers in a beckoning gesture. She looked at the man, contemplatively, but apparently decided that there was nothing she could do. Opening her pouches and bags, she brought forth a variety of valuables, as well as other random items. Personal technological devices from different planets, pieces of jewellery, and other small trinkets of questionable value, including a pack of tissues. James whistled through his teeth while taking the items, immediately either handing them off to Reprieg, or carefully discarding them on the floor. That's quite the impressive haul, he said, and he honestly sounded impressed. The rage nearly shook Reprieg's entire body, making his fur rustle. Here he had just started to gain a modicum of respect for the freak, all for naught. You can't be serious, he exclaimed, stomping one of his feet and always dropping one of the valuable items James had pawned off on him. He quickly regrouted before it fell, but that meant he had to regain his composure, while James looked at him, ambiguously with puckered lips. You do realise we are talking to a criminal here? James sighed audibly. Calm your trunk, Reprieve, the freak said, and it sounded a lot more annoyed than conciliatorily, especially with him rolling his eyes. I can very well tell right from wrong myself, and I clearly don't plan to let her get away with it. I just never expected me to pickpocket out in space, and such a well-equipped one at that. His voice mellowed out a bit as he spoke, and in the end, he merely shrugged with a casual smile. Reprieve shook his head at that clear display of sheer disregard for the situation. However, at least he apparently knew about his severity, even if he outwardly didn't let on that much. She's probably a professional if I had to guess, he said, moving on from James's other comments and throwing another dark look at the lowlife. I wouldn't be surprised if security finds an extensive record for her once they look into it. Speaking of security, they sure were taking their sweet time to get here. I gotta put food in my belly somehow, the thief truthfully mumbled, while finally holding Reprie's gaze but avoiding that of James. Gotta eat to live, James agreed candidly with another shrug, however his tone soon after changed to a surprisingly more serious one. But I didn't think anyone would have to go hungry in the community. The girl seemed surprised at his change of tone and quickly glanced at him, However, a prig was quick to answer James's inquiry for her. That's because they don't, but some choose to anyway, he explained crossly, while letting his sheer distaste for these vile people seep into his voice. James seemed to be confused at that statement, rightfully so. Clearly he was aware of the extensive helps that the community gave out to all of its citizens. However, the certain type of people they were dealing with right now was a bit more out of the general well of knowledge. Yeah, but take arms and going to exile. She basically spat a reprieve, her words sheer venom, as James could only look on in even more confusion. I think I'm better off getting by on me own, thank you very much. Then at least I can go back home once the world has finally managed to beat me down. Wait, exile? James asked apprehensively, while looking back and forth between the two of them. And the girl let out another half through her nose while reprieve was once again faster with his reply. She is a Kes there, therefore at a class two, Lack of essential resources and hyper-competitive evolution, he listed off in an individual's tone while giving the girl the side-eye. Her people have long been known as troublemakers, even though the wide wealth of resources amongst the stars has been open to them for years and years now, they still seem to think that it is the Dark Ages and everyone has to survive for themselves, and if they don't, they are seen as outcast. I can talk for myself, you know that? The thief blurted out, and took an almost threatening step towards Reprieve with an angry visage. However, she quickly thought better of it and dropped her display. Her three large nostrils still flared annoyedly. That is quite something, 
James mumbled thoughtfully, ignoring the friendly display before him and apparently becoming lost in his own thoughts, bringing one hand to his chin. Reprieve wiggled his trunk a bit while dismissively turning away from the low life. There's no need to get worked up over it, he said in a resigned tone, lifting his hands to imitate the human shrugging. It is their own fault. They choose this life like this and won't accept any help offered to them by the community. They have no one to blame but themselves. James didn't quite seem to hear what he said, simply acknowledging it with a quick, ambiguous sound. You're making it quite easy for yourself, the thief grumbled deeply. Yeah, James mumbled. Reprieve wasn't sure if he was confirming what the girl had said or just finishing his last thought out loud. Either way, the human ambassador turned towards the girl purposely right after that, and very directly asked her, What is your name, by the way? The girl blinked confusedly in his direction for a moment before answering. They call me Sky. James raised his eyebrows at that in an earnest look of surprise. Sky? Your name is Sky? He asked in seeming disbelief. Yeah? What about it? The girl bluffed back at him. Nothing, James said, audibly exhaling some air through his nose and shaking his now hanging head. Just a strange coincidence, I guess. Then he snapped back up and looked at Reprieve with a strange expression. Uh, sorry, Reprieve, but I should probably skedaddle now, he said conciliatorily. And it supposedly sounded like he was actually sorry about it. Do you mind handling the staff with the security again? You know, my track rocker with them. Also, I'm running out of time for my day later and should really get going now. Reprieve looked at him for a moment before replying. I take it you don't wish to testify against that girl, even though she is clearly guilty. James laughed awkwardly and scratched the back of his head. You know me too well, he admitted with an embarrassed smile, and squeezed his eyes shut. Besides, if her guilt is that clear, my testimony shouldn't be necessary. I only caught her after the act, after all. Reprieve had to take a deep breath at that. Just what was going on in the head of that man? He could mostly guess the directions his mind was going, but never how he got there in the first place. Sure, go on ahead. I'll deal with the aftermath. He finally volunteered, while rubbing his forehead with one hand. This was better either way. It didn't get the target involved in any petty altercations that could complicate things down the line. James took a deeper bow and loudly proclaimed, Thank you very much. I owe you one. Then he quickly turned towards that sky girl. Don't make any more trouble, please, he said, exceedingly courteously. And farewell, Sky. The petty thief pulled her head back in surprise, her many ears fluttering excitedly. Farewell, she replied meekly. James smiled at her before turning on his heels and rushing away from the scene, leaving the valuables he had collected from the girl laying discarded on the ground. Success to you, he shouted behind him as he hurried off. Success to you, Reprieve and surprisingly also the girl replied simultaneously. Reprieve looked after his target for a few more seconds. A strange creature he was indeed. And he wasn't the only one. Well, that was quite a bit easier than I expected. The thief commented while staring after James. Annoyed, Reprieve turned towards her. What are you talking about? He asked, while shaking her a venomous glare. However, the girl was ignoring him and rummaging through one of her pouches. Quickly, Reprieve rushed over, grabbing her hand and finally yanking it out of the pocket before she could bring forth another one of her villainous gadgets. Ouch! Hey! She yelled out, struggling against his grip, but failing just as miserably as she had against James. Watch it, you're hurting me! However, Reprieve looked at her hand that was still holding on to whatever she was trying to pull out of her pocket. However, it was something he didn't expect. A communicator? He thought to himself, staring at the thing. Who the hell did she want to contact? Accomplishes? With him right in front of her face? However, two things happened simultaneously. At exactly the same time, both the communicator in the thief's hand and his own personal attendant came to life and loudly announced that someone was trying to contact them. A coincidence? No. It was way too well time for that. Hesitantly, he looked down towards his wrist, while his arm was still occasionally slightly moved by the failed attempts of the girl to free herself. Hyferty was calling him. Could it be that? Don't you want to get that, Slowpoke? The low life smugly asked him, looking strangely triumphant. This was all very peculiar. Also, he had stayed behind to deal with the security, but where were they anyway? There was a large smoke explosion right in the middle of the street, so even if no one alerted them, they should definitely have arrived here on their own by now. Moving deliberately slowly, he reached over to his assistant without letting go of the girl, and accepted the call. Reprieve here. What is the matter, Hypher? He asked loud and clear. He noticed that the thief had now also moved to accept the call on her communicator, and as he had already feared, Hyverty's voice now answered out of both devices simultaneously, creating a strange effect with her already unusual voice overlapping with itself. Would you please let go of our little rascal, Reprieve? She did her part wonderfully, so we should be a bit nicer to her, don't you think? She said sweetly, although her voice carried a commanding undertone. What you want about? Reprieve responded exasperatedly, dropping the arm of the girl and bringing his assistant up to his face. 
This whole situation stank. Her task, of course, as well as yours. Hyperty answers in a typical hyper-casual tone, as if that would explain anything. It got me a bit faster than I expected, but otherwise I'd say things went fine. Sky now said into her own communicator, while also massaging the spot where Reprie could grab her with her other hand. Quite so, Hyperty replied to her, clearly understanding what she meant by that for some reason. Reprie took a deep breath. I take it that all of this was your doing then? He asked resignedly into the microphone. Of course it was. Hyperty answered way too happily, completely ignoring his tone. Or do you know anyone else who could organise a plan like this in such short notice? Why did he even bother? Agitated, he felt the need to comb some of his standing fur back into place, so he could at least stroke along the grain of his hairs with his hands. And you didn't feel like you should fill me in on this plan, did you? Reprie groaned into the device, while rubbing across his closed eyes. A dissatisfied sound emerged from the speakers. Then Hyperty replied in a peeved tone. And when was I supposed to do that? The target didn't leave your side for the entire day. How exactly, dear Reprieve, did you want me to fill you in on anything? Reprieve wiggled his trunk at that. Oh no, he would not let her shift the blame onto him again. When was all this planned anyway? Well, I got called in just like an hour ago if that helps. Sky unhealthily interjected with an annoyingly gloating tone. He signed her with a movement of his arm, which worked about as well as one would expect given her attitude. I told you it was very short notice. Hyper's voice now whined out of the speakers. Honestly, they expect me to work miracles around here. They should thank their lucky stars that I'm as good as I am, or they'd have to wait for their oh-so-precious results. What results? Reprie quickly interjected, as Hyper needed to take a breath in the middle of her ranting. Right, Hyper answered, quickly putting herself together and bringing her voice back down. Well, the short version is, somebody felt like our dear ambassador didn't quite get the picture, so they wanted something to help him out a little. After all, personal experience sticks with you more than something than other people tell you. And the long version? He asked, not satisfied with just that petty answer. That I will give to you once we can talk more freely, Hyper replied sternly, her tone changing to that one would expect in an exchange among colleagues. There are a few many eyes and ears around you right now, or so you should get out of there anyway. The embargo we managed to put in place for the security is about to run out. What about me payment? Sky said demandingly, and lifted her communicator all the way to her face. I have a string like laughter rang out from the speakers. You shall sure have it, don't worry, she finally replied. Reprieve will handle that, just accompany him for now. We may even have some more work for you. Sky looked at the communicator disgruntledly. Apparently that much had not been part of the agreement. Reprieve very much shared her unhappy sentiment. Very funny, he commented sarcastically and annoyedly shook his head. What if one of the target's cohorts sees me with her? Another one of those dissatisfied tones from Hyper T. We'll of course make sure that doesn't happen, she effectively stated. Tessil is already on it, and I will send you the route and keep it updated, so don't worry about it. We're on borrowed time here, so get moving already. He wasn't happy with that at all, but he also didn't have a choice. He just hung up the call and looked over at the road for hire, who well as the signalled him to lead the way. Although she didn't look any more pleased with the situation than he felt. Heeding Hyperty's advice, especially since it was quite possible that she still listened in on them, he remained silent throughout their long way towards his designated room. So far he had barely been able to use the thing, having sworn off a full sleep since his fateful nightmare after his close encounter with the freak, and also being constantly called out to wherever the human felt like going. Being constantly available, able to be called upon and ready at any moment's notice was one of the reasons he had been selected for his task, he was fairly sure. Crossing a long way while keeping quiet the entire time gave him plenty of time to think. Someone thought James didn't quite get the picture, was what Hyver said. Not a lot of information, but he felt like he at least got the bare basics of what was going on. So, Sky was there to serve as a demonstration. However, something made him highly doubt his effectiveness. Experience stick better with you than stories, they said. That may have been true, and he could also not think of any better candidate for an example like this than a Kes there, but you also needed to come to the right conclusions out of the experience for this to work. I was someone who found his arm being ripped open not only not in the least bit concerning, but endearing of all things. He wasn't comfortable thinking that that man would ever reach something like a reasonable or even a predictable conclusion out of an experience. Did Typher really still not get that much? Either way, after a long march, the two unwilling accomplices finally arrived in Reprieve's detonated room, where they were finally free of any possibility of prying eyes or ears. Not that Reprieve was overly concerned about that anyway. 
What were the chances of a random passerby not only listening in on a tidbit of the information, but also knowing what was being talked about, drawing the right conclusions from it and acting upon it in such an ideal way, that it actually would interfere with their work? But be that as it may, he had no room to argue about it, so here they were. At least he would get some use out of the room, other than storing some of his stuff and spending a modicum of his time here. It felt like a waste just letting it sit empty all the time. Pretty plain for a warrant officer, Sky commented, while looking around his things to his great displeasure. He made sure to keep a close eye on her as long as she was here, to make sure she kept her long fingers to herself. We don't tend to demand any special treatment for ourselves, he said plainly, following the girl with his gaze as she pranced about the room. As if you are used to anything better than this. I'm not, she immediately admitted, with a flick of her many long ears. But I expected more. Reprieve shook out his head, trying to regain his professionality, as this was supposed to be a business transaction. Now then, let's get this over with. What are you owed in terms of payment? He asked dismissively, while bringing up his assistant to tap into the necessary banking formalities. Oh, not much, Sky answered, trying and failing to sound cheeky. Just a little old, 500,000 you see? Reprieve's eyes sprang wide open as he lifted his head in surprise, staring at the criminal. How much? He burst out disbelievingly. Tis a reasonable price. Sky answered dismissively, and tilted her head left to right. Me skin was on the line after all. Also, you bigwigs have it, don't you? The lady make it sound like you're stinking rich. He looked at her distrustfully. Was she trying to swindle him? One moment, I have to confirm this. He said, turning away from her and quickly dining high for tea. What was she thinking offering that much money to such a miscreant? I have her quickly picked up again. Thankfully, this time her voice emerged out of only one speaker at a time. Hello again, she cheerfully chimed. Hello, Reprieve answered dryly, shaking his trunk at her nonchalant behaviour that rivaled that of even the human. I'm calling to confirm something with you. The payment of 500,000 UC, I wager, she merely answered, obviously having expected this call. Yes, that is all correct. Please handle that post haste. We don't want any unclear debt after all. Reprieve was at a loss for words. He merely stood and stared for a moment. Oh, come on, don't act all snappy. Hiver spoke up again as the line had gone silent on her end. It's not like we don't have the budget. Finally, we get to spend some of it. Reprieve felt himself shaking as his first stood up again. His tongue slid across his trunk nervously. But such an amount on someone like her? He asked tonelessly. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Sky aggressively butted in, giving Reprieve a challenging look. However, he was over this petty scorpion by now. If this was how it was supposed to be, then that wasn't his problem. Moving his call with Hyperty out of the way, he brought out the banking data once again. Fine, I need your account. Looking at him surprisingly, presumably due to the lack of sass on his side, Sky quickly obliged and Reprieve got to work handling the deposit. This is going to be a nice bit of reserve, the girl mused, sounding generally happy for the first time since she'd been around. Reprieve merely let out an audible breath as a reply. So, you want me to fill you in now? Hyperty's voice asked from the still open line between them. Do you have to ask that? Reprieve replied soberly. He should have been informed ages ago, so doing it now was not only wanted, but absolutely necessary. Alright, so as I said, one of the guests felt that the evening wasn't really getting through to James in the way they imagined, so they decided to give him a little push in the right direction. And who better to demonstrate the goal than one of the best bad examples out there? And as a lucky bonus, they are also Death Worlders. And I had contact one on hand. Almost too perfect, don't you think? So... Hyphody started. But with one of the worst possible timings, she was immediately interrupted by a loud knock at the door. Ah, oh, what was it now? Hold that thought, Reprieve said, and turned towards the door. Sky was distrustfully eyeing the steel gate. Maybe she was thinking she had been lured into a trap. Either way, Reprieve didn't care that much. He just loudly and annoyingly asked, Who is it? it it's me, Tess. The nervous voice of Tessil came through the door, muffled by the barrier. The rookie really needed to learn to stay a bit more collected. His stuttering every time he spoke to Reprieve was getting out of hand. Exasperatedly, Reprieve invited him in. The large Xanathai quickly slipped into the room and closed the door behind him. Done with reconnaissance? Reprieve asked the avian, who quickly looked back and forth between the two people in the room. Yes, sir, Tassil quickly answered, snapping to attention and proudly displaying his otherworldly violet feathers. The perimeters are secure. Then, as his eyes fell upon Sky and rested upon her for a little longer, he sank back into himself, his fluffed up plumes flattening against his chest. Is... is that Sky? He asked Reprieve, apparently too uncomfortable to address the girl directly. She is, Sky answered him anyway, apparently having had enough of people talking about her while she was present. Tassil's eye snapped over to her as he looked her up and down. But she is... I mean, you are, he mumbled, apparently not managing to quite get the words out. 
And what? She barked at him, astonishingly assertive. You're so young, Desil blurted out, causing the girl to flinch back for a moment. Then Desil turned towards Reprieg and accusingly asked, Look at her, sir, she's not even grown up yet. She's the size of a human, for goodness sake. Reprieg looked at the outpost of the rookie incredulously. Well, don't tell me that, he said dismissively, waving off Tess's wasted concern. I had nothing to do with this. If you have problems, bring it up with Haifa. I'd be right happy to talk this through with you. Haifati's voice came out of the speaker in Reprieg's arm, without a hint of irritation or even acknowledgement of Desil's outburst in it. Desil looked at Reprieg, then at the device, and then back at Sky, who merely casually studied the young man's appearance. No, that won't be necessary, he said with clearly suppressed emotions in his voice. He quickly shook his head, ruffling up the feathers in his collar area and on his forehead in the process. Reprieg merely looked at him for a few moments. What had gotten into him now? However, as Cecile remained silent for a while longer, Reprieg asked him, Was that all for now? Desil looked down to the ground as he replied, Yes, sir, that was... However, his voice trailed off as his pupils constricted to pin-needle points for a second, and he looked down to the ground. Then, with a purposeful movement, he righted himself up to his full height again, and loudly announced, Actually, sir, I would like to talk to you about what happened earlier today. I recognise this may not be the best moment, however, it needs to be addressed. Earlier today, what was he on about now? He hadn't talked to Tassil today, he was pretty sure of that. Was he talking about the mission? And what exactly are you referring to? He inquired, as he wanted to quickly deal with whatever new problem the rookie saw. You can see the jaw of the avian clenching his beak tightly shut before he opened it again to answer. It is about the conversation you overheard earlier, sir. Conversation? He didn't remember calling in on any conversation. Had there even been any out of the ordinary conversations during the mission? Stop with the vagueness already, he said annoyedly, as he really didn't feel like dealing with any more young upstarts thinking that they have to speak their mind all the time. What conversation? The seal blinked at him surprisingly, it seemed that he didn't think he was being vague at all. The conversation I had in front of your room, sir, he explained dumbstruck, the one you listened in on. A conversation in front of his room? One he listened in on, no less? I have no idea what you're talking about, Reprieve said agitatedly. Uh, but, sir, that is impossible, Desil insisted, his feathers ruffling loudly. What gives you that idea? Reprieve commodically asked, as the sureness of the young man unsettled him. He couldn't have forgotten about something like that, he was sure. But if he hadn't forgotten, then what was Desil remembering? But, sir, you even banged against the door, Desil said. And apparently the unsettling nature of the occurrence was catching up with him now. I assumed you were letting me know that you could hear every word. Just what kind of conversation had Desil had here earlier? And more importantly, what the hell did he hear? Both Desil and Skye looked at Reprieve with a clear sense of foreboding in their eyes, as Reprieve slowly but purposely walked closer to Desil, and in no uncertain terms said, I need you to think about this very thoroughly, Tez. When exactly did you hear that bang?